everybody, my name's Ruth, and today we're going to be learning about the Web Audio API in 10 minutes. Okay, rules for talks, rules for talks, do not drink before a talk, uh, prepare your talk, never live code in a talk, right? <laughs> so everybody ready? Uh, so we're not going to do a talk today, we're going to do a nice little lesson about the Web Audio API. Now you have to bear in mind that this API took me eight and a half minutes to scroll down the specification at normal scrolling rate. I have got 10 minutes. There is absolutely no way I'm going to be able to teach you about this API in 10 minutes. But I thought I would wet your lips, right? And the best way to do that is just to write a little bit of code. It is a normal browser API. It comes with your browser. It does come in varying formats in different browsers. <laughs> Safari. Um, but you can just go into Chrome. Come on, if you want to play with it, it's fine. Um, it contains loads of functionality. It is about audio, right? So we're talking about loading sounds in and making sounds. We're talking about modifying those sounds. So changing the volume, panning them from the left to the right speaker, putting filters on those sounds, analyzing those sounds. It contains all of that spatialization of sounds. If you want sounds to sound like they're coming above you or below you and from over there, you can do this all with this one API. That's why it's such a big API. I'm going to do a very, very small, tiny, weeny little bit of it now. Um, when we talk about all that functionality, like putting sounds in, modifying them, and putting them out, we're talking about nodes. So all of these different bits of functionality are talked about as nodes. And what you do is you have input nodes, you have modification nodes, you have output nodes, and they're all part of the audio graph. So what we do is we build up the audio graph as we go. I'm going to build a very small audio graph. Can you tell that I'm putting off actual code in here? <laughs> <laughs> I've got notes. I've got bullet points. I've still got eight minutes. This is great. I'm actually ahead of schedule. This is, this is cool. Okay, so um, I have set some stuff up beforehand. I did not prep this talk. This could go horribly wrong. Um, but what I have done, just so everybody is aware, I've got a button in my HTML. Can everybody see that all right? Excellent. Um, if anybody shook their head, I did not see that. <laughs> there is a button. Um, I have styled said button, so it looks super cool. Um, and all I have done is just selected that with my JavaScript, and I've added an event listener. I've written a function, and what's going to happen when I click on that button, it's going to run the function. That's all I've done. It's pretty simple JavaScript. If you need to find out what's going on there, talk to me afterwards because we've got a lot more to talk about than just the Web Audio API. Okay, so I'm going to write some stuff in this function oscillate because there's four main ways to get audio into the Audio API. Um, there's, it's kind of a little bit more detailed than that, but I'm just going to go over the four. You can grab it from your DOM. So if you've got an audio or a video element in your DOM, you can grab the sound source from that. Um, you can stream it via the camera or the microphone on your device. So you can just stream it from that. That's a super cool way of doing it. You can go and get the file. So you can just HTTP request the actual file and buffer it into the Web Audio API. You have to decode it. Audio files come with MP3 decoding, FLAC decoding, all of that. So you have to sort of buffer it in, decode it. There's a thing that you have to do. Um, you can create sounds. So I'm going to create an oscillator. An oscillator creates a sound wave, right? We've all seen those pictures of a sound wave like that. We all know that light and sound is hitting your senses with a wave. I'm going to do that right now. This may or may not work. I'm going to write really poor code. Is everybody ready for this? Okay. Let's oscillator or oscillator equal. Oh no, we need to create the context. I'm so sorry. I should be, I should be following this. Create context, Ruth. Okay. And um, before we do anything, we need an audio context. So this is a little bit like, if you've ever worked with Canvas, it's the same thing. You need to create your environment to use all of this functionality, right? So we need to create a new audio context that will give us all the properties and all the methods that we get with the audio API. So I'm just going to do that. Thank you very much, Copan, for auto-completing for me because that's going to make this quicker. Um, that's it. I've got it. Um, there's a little bit of browser and nuances <coughs> Safari around that, but I'm using Chrome, so it's totally fine. Um, so now that I've got the audio context, I can just call that, and I can just do create oscillator. I'm really sorry that um, I can't spell oscillator out of the box. And 
that's not auto-completing. Um, this is the factory way of doing it. There is a new way of doing it in the audio API, so you can do it with the class method, where I can literally just go new, oscillate a node, and you pass in the parameters, which I'm just going to set. It is a super cool way of doing it. Find out more on MDN docs. I will come to that later. I've got five minutes. It's, I'm going to go really, really fast. Okay, we can set some parameters on this oscillator. We can set the frequency, which is whether it's high or whether it's low, and we just do this with like frequency dot value, and we can be like, yeah, this is super cool. Let's do it for for O because that is an A. Yeah, cool, awesome. Um, we can also do things like type. We have got um, for oscillators, you can have like a square wave or a sine wave or a triangle wave or a sawtooth wave. They're your basic ways that all <coughs> oscillators make. That's because they're really, really easy to make digitally. Um, there is functionality in the Web Audio API where you can actually pass in your own wave tables. So you can actually have a whole bunch of values and create your own wave to pass into this oscillator. I'm not going to do that now. I've done that before. It takes 4,000 lines of JavaScript. I've got four and a half minutes. This is going to be great. Let's make a triangle wave. That's super cool. Right, so we've done that. We actually need to connect this through and start the oscillator. By clicking this button, we're not actually going to play it yet. So we have to do oscillator.connect. Do you remember that audio graph that I was talking about earlier? We have to connect that to our audio context destination. By default, this is our destination node, um, and that is my speakers, but we also have to start it. So we have to do oscillator.start. And I want to stop it after like a second because <laughs> I don't want it to go on forever. So audio context has a current time property, which is a super cool property because it's better than all the other timing um, things in JavaScript because it's actually the hardware timing on your hardware clock, not any of the stuff in the browser. So it's not going to be interfered with by any of the other stuff that's going on in the DOM. Super cool. You can read about that. It's not working. I know, right? Um, it's being cool. Um, it's cool. I have a backup plan. It's super fine. This is where always write the code. And we can just comment this out because this was totally working before. Hmm? You weren't calling star hustle in the back of star. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. So you never like going dogs. Yes, still not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be something, something crazy. Um, okay, so that's totally playing an oscillator. Great. Okay, but I did promise in this talk, I've got two and a half minutes, so I am just going to copy and paste this over here. Um, I did promise lasers. I can't believe that Seren didn't mention that I didn't promise Like, Yeah, I totally promised lasers. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. So um, there's a few other things that we can do. So let's just pretend we had an oscillator. Super great. Um, <laughs> then, <laughs> that was a great Ruth. Uh, there we go. I promise lasers. Not good. Laser. Promise kept. <laughs> Laser. <laughs> okay, so there's a few other things that we can do. Because all an, all an oscillator is going to do is it's just going to give us a clean sound for like one second, right? Um, I do do other tools that this does work because I'm not live coding. So check those out. Um, the other things I've done here is I've created another node. I've created a node called a gain node. This sets the volume. So this is going to set the the low sounds and the high sounds. I just check it's not actually my volume. It's not actually my volume. <laughs> and uh, what we're actually going to do with those things is I'm going to take the frequency, and there's a few methods that you have on any of these properties that you have in the Web Audio API. One of them is ex exponential ramp to value at time, which is a super cool method. But basically what that's doing is that's setting our value. So for our frequency, we had a 440, right? That's an A, that's like basically in the middle of the piano. It's sort of in the middle, it's just below the middle. Um, I can drop the frequency off at a certain time. So it starts at 440, but then it drops off. So it's going to go down at a certain time. I can do exactly the same with the gain. So what I've done there is I've created a gain node. It's going to start volume at once. It's going to start a normal volume, but I'm going to drop that volume off after like a second, right? That's what this code is doing. <laughs> it was working when I left it. Is all this working? It might be the autoplay plus thing. Let's have a look. Okay, I think I know what it is. Let's just do this and see what happens. <laughs> this is all working, I right? <laughs> love this. Um, let's uncomment all of this. 
and see if we can get it working. If I can't, I'm totally going to just be sitting there, just making laser sounds <laughs> until it works. Um, have I called audio context the same? I have called it the same. Uh, with, maybe it's trying to come out of the projector. Hang on. I bet it is, actually. I'm going to pull that projector. I've got five seconds. Thank you very much. Um, I've got no seconds, so I'm packing up. But there is a very much longer talk on this on the internet. If you want to search for it, it does go into a lot more depth. I have just updated all the web audio documentation for MDN Docs, and there are some tutorials about all of that, how to get started, how to do more advanced stuff, and all the rest of it. So if you go on MDN Docs, go to Web Audio API if you want to learn more. It's all on there with very cool demos. Thank you very much. Thank you.